kids coming here, and he wants to take me to San Francisco. Dear Daisy, stop. Have had a great time with you and my past visits to your saloon. Stop. We'll be in town soon to take you to San Francisco. Woo! Daisy. Oh, kid. Oh. <laughs> How's my favorite saloon girl? Oh, I'm doing great now uh, that you're here. Hey, it's been two long months since I've seen you, but as the top gunfighter in the state of Kansas, the Durango kid has been busy. I have had to rescue five ranches from rustlers, chase away four Indian tribes, Captured ten wanted outlaws. Ten. And worst of all, I had to break up a crooked old lady's poker game at a senior oh, home. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful, Durango kid. Mm -hmm. And now I'm off to take you with me, and we can get married, and I'm going to buy you lots of things. Terrific. But you don't have to spend a lot on little old me. Oh, I bought an 80-acre ranch in San Francisco. You're going to have bracelets, diamonds, clothes, you name it. Well, I could be persuaded, yeah. I would say. All righty. All I have to do now is send a telegram to my ma so she can come out and meet us. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ma's going to come from Illinois and meet us. You and her can go shopping together. You can bake bread together, make clothes together. I mean, the three of us, it'll be great. What? Your ma's going to live with... Us? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I stay in touch with her once a month. Again, she's going to come from Illinois. She's going to come out there. It'll be the three of us. It'll be grand. Well, being a saloon girl at $40 a month is starting to look better all the time. It was good of you to come see me on Valentine's Day, Valerie. It is great to see you, Chip. Enjoy the candies and the cookies I brought you. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, the next four months, I'm out of here. And then it's just you and me. Great. Oh, but the next time you decide to rob a hotel, make sure there's not a police convention going on at the same time. I know. I had 30 cops on me in like a minute. Fortunately, nobody knows about the 30 grand I have hidden away from a previous robbery. When I get out, we can spend that. Later today, I'm meeting with Omar, your attorney, about some matters. Oh, yeah. I, uh, you and him have met uh, like ten times in the last two months. What's so important? Well, you realize when you get out of here, you have to worry about a job, a car, a parole officer. There's a lot to be concerned about. We want it all to be well for you. Okay, I hadn't thought about that. Well, I'll tell you what, you really are swell, Valerie. You're really something. I better be off now, Chip. But remember that I did tuck a note inside of those cookies and candies I brought you. Oh, is it sweet and mushy? Of course it is. But wait until later tonight to read it, okay? All righty. Bye, Chip. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Chip, this was the last Valentine's Day we'll spend together. Tomorrow, Omar and I are running off together. I'm taking $20,000 from your previous robbery with me. Omar and I have found one another, and he's made money representing other morons like you. We're off to the South Pacific, Hawaii, Tahiti, Australia. The other $10,000 of the $30,000 you had hidden is staying there. And the warden will get a letter in a few days saying where it's at. With your fingerprints on it, that should keep you locked up for a few more years. Happy Valentine's Day. You've been a good nurse, Ardina, for me while I've been recovering from my gallbladder operation, and I'd like to repay you. Can I buy you a new car, a fur coat, a trip around the world? What I'm already getting paid is fine, Mr. Wilmington. Besides, what would you tell your wife? Well, you got a good point there. She does monitor my finances rather well. But then again, when you're worth $40 million, that can happen. However, I would still like to repay you handsomely. Well, if you insist, you could leave me some money in your will. My will? Yeah, I guess I could do that. In fact, I happen to have the will right here. Um, I could go through this. Uh... Yeah, my lawyer is the only other person that would have to know about a change, so 
Um, yeah, I could tell him about that later. Are you sure? Absolutely. Okay, well, let me see here. I got enough people in this already. Uh, nurse Ardina Keenwell. I leave $3 million. Thank and I'll you. even date it, okay? You might want to date it for last week. Today is my last day. Ah, yes, I see what you mean. It might look suspicious right. otherwise. Yes. Okay, I'll work on that here a little bit, so. Now, it is time for your medicine. You need to take the full course, and this is the last time you'll have to oh, take okay. some. Okay, all righty, yeah. I never did get used to the taste no. of that. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, I tell you, that taste could kill you. All righty, let me finish working on this. Nurse Ardina Keenwell. I'm going to bequeath $3 million. Okay, Wilmington. Mm, I oh. You're all right, uh, Mr. Wilmington. Hi, Rudy, it's me. It worked. The medicine makes it look like he had a bad reaction. He's dead. We got three million dollars. The will should be read next week. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. He should have stayed in a hospital. <laughs> You're the laziest man in the village. You won't even take me to the cave fight this Saturday. There's dance afterwards. Oh, lay off. I've had it tough. I have to fight dinosaurs, swim in the river to get food, and climb cliffs all week. Huh. You haven't fought a dinosaur in two years, and you can't swim. You're afraid of heights. It says here that Mickey the Mauler, the brawling caveman, makes his yearly visit and will fight three cavemen this Saturday. Oh, big deal. They pick three guys at random. They climb in the ring with him, he'll mop them up, and that'll be it. Hmm. Could be you who gets picked to fight him this year. I rather doubt that. There's over 1,200 men in this village. The chances of it being me are rather slim. Nope, I'm staying home Saturday night and playing a new card game with the boys. Well, I'll be at the fight, front row too, because you have been picked this year to fight Mickey Muller. waitress at the Broken Hearts Club. At this club, this is where women go when their husbands or boyfriends forget them on Valentine's Day. We have many ways for women to eliminate their men if they get forgotten. We have guns, knives, and much, much more. So remember, if you're forgotten this Valentine's Day, come to the Broken Hearts Club. You'll be glad you did. Serafina, who's escorting you to the Valentine's Ball today? I do declare, Penelope. Why, it's Major Thurston Carmichael that's escorting me to the Valentine Ball. Surely you just. Why, well, Thurston's escorting me to the ball tonight. Why, he told me himself, Penelope, that he's going to take me to the ball, so stop fibbing me. Serafina, you stop joshing me, or I'll bob you over the head with my umbrella. Try it, and I'll tear your hair out. Hello, ladies. I must say, you both look quite ravishing this evening. Thurston, tell Serafina that you're escorting me to the ball tonight. No, tell her you're escorting me to the ball tonight. I'm sorry to say, ladies, I will be taking neither of you to the ball this evening. I'm taking Lady Emily. I'm very, very sorry. Oh, ladies, ladies, please, cease and desist. Oh, ow. Hi, it's time for the Valentine's dance and as head cheerleader, I have plenty of offers for the dance this year. Matter of fact, I had to make a list to remind myself. Let's see. There's Jimmy, Ricky, Tommy, Mr. Bevins. What? He's the principal. Mr. Eastman. He's the vice principal. <laughs> Mr. Camden, he's my counselor. Mr. Ramses, he's the janitor. Well, 
It'll be a toss-up between student and faculty this year. What a ride around the punch bowl. Ah, my princess. I would like to have the privilege of escorting you this week to the royal dance. And I also need to bring to your attention a new activity that is taking place. Men and women handing love notes to one another. They're thinking of making it a once a year tradition. Really? As for the dance, are you worthy enough to escort me? Ah, I recently fought in a war. I destroyed an entire city. I swam a whole river and I captured 100 enemy soldiers. Child's play. I'll add you to the long waiting list. Go out and start another war and then report back to me. Maybe you'll move up on the list. Your wish is definitely my command, Princess. People handing out love notes to one another. I wonder if that will catch on. That's going to wrap up our 2001 Interesting Individuals Valentine's program. As always, some big thank yous to pass out to a lot of people. Ken and Jeannie Huff of Wright's Flower Shop. Marge Gondek with Rainbow Trades Balloons Always. Sue Copeland of Costume World, whose costumes were able to help us act out our little sketches, along with the Michigan City Public Library. Don Varda, Martin Beakley. Andy Steele, Dan Smith. Cindy Taylor, Tony Simmons, Susan Brown. That will conclude this edition of Interesting Individuals. Once again, I am Bill Landing. Join us for another show soon.